I want to talk about the characters I hate in my universe because I hate a lot of them and I want to make people mad although some of them you may agree with so we'll see but here I am talking about the characters in my universe who I hope die sometimes <laughs> Now, I'm not going to, maybe I should do this in an order. I may do this in an order. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do this in order from, I'm going to do top five. Top five hated characters for me. I'm going to go from least to most. So, uh, we're going to start first with Octavian. Octavian, I mean, I don't really need to say much about Octavian. The guy just sucks. He's, firstly, a bad villain. Secondly, manipulative asshole. Thirdly, blackmailing asshole, sexist asshole, and kind of racist too. So, I mean, he checks all the boxes of an asshole that you would love to hate. And, you know, I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that. So we're just going to move right on. Although you may be surprised that he's number five of my least because maybe he could be... No, we're going to keep him at number five. Number four is Leo. <laughs> and yes, I hate Leo more than Octavian, but surprisingly, he's not near the top. And Leo, I hate because the guy, he's just not nice. Now, I'm going to card my Leo Valdez as a bully video because that kind of lays out all of the reasons why I hate him the most. But again, sexist, racist, prejudiced, just generally not a nice person that, I, like, if I was around him in real life, um, I wouldn't be. I would like I would warn the people he was close to be like hey you do know he's not a good person right secondly I'd probably argue with him all the time if I was ever in his presence because the guy just does not understand boundaries and like as someone <laughs> who is neurodivergent non excuse as much as many people try to use that as an excuse boundaries are still a thing neurodivergent or not you gotta respect them and I just he just doesn't improve. Octavian, he's less of a hated character to me because he's a villain. He's meant to be a douchebag. Leo is meant to be a hero and yet is consistently a raging douchebag. Which is why I hate him. So that's why he's number four, but he's not any higher because there are people who are worse. And interestingly, the rest of these are like side characters. So those are like the only two main characters I hate, which I guess is a good thing. So yay <laughs> number three is alex Val oh no hold on alex number three alex valdez's not alex valdez's alex friero's dad because um he sucks he's a transphobic douchebag who treated his child like trash for no reason other than the fact that alex is trans was born from Loki, who is a gender fluid god, and that in itself made him angry because, again, transphobic trash. And yeah, uh, fuck transphobes. Next one, number two, the Fausts from the Cain Chronicles series, who are Carter and Sadie's maternal grandparents. Um, they're racist. It's just we're just gonna say it how it is they're racist um they specifically only wanted sadie and though they don't specify the reason it's because she's light-skinned and white passing they only want to see they don't even want to see carter i take that back actually they don't want to see carter even though he's only there two times out of the year they have no interest in seeing Carter, speaking to Carter, being near Carter. I think his dad, well, his and Sadie's dad, is horrific, treats him terribly. I mean, literally, all of this has happened after he's just lost his wife and the mother of his children. And they think, yeah, you know what would be a good idea? Separating the siblings. We'll take the light-skinned one, you take the one that looks like you. And we don't want to see him Ever. You can see the one that we picked because she's white passing. And um, you can see her two times out of the year. 
There's literally a scene in the first book where Carter goes to knock on the door and he hears his grandparents, to reiterate, his grandparents say, don't let him in. Don't let him in. And then, when their dad goddamn dies, they don't want Carter to stay with them. They're happy to let this young boy be homeless and have nowhere to go because they don't want him. What is the reason they don't want him? He looks like his dad. What does his dad look like? A dark-skinned black man. I mean, like, <laughs> I've had a lot of people to make me on this saying, oh, they're not racist. They just wanted Sadie because they look like their mum. Carter also does because he's also their daughter's son. Why didn't they want both of them? Why do they never want to see Carter? Why do they not want a relationship with Carter? Carter knew, and even and Sadie also knew, that her grandparents wouldn't want him to stay there. So he nearly leaves with Amos, a complete stranger, because they both know grandparent Fausts don't want this dark-skinned boy because he looks like the, his dad. And people, again, will say, oh, they, they only don't like Carter because, you know, his dad is the reason their daughter died. Still take the child in. Whether he looks like his dad or not, shouldn't matter. Literally, the only thing... <laughs> Sadie is also Julius's daughter. I mean, it's just the whole situation... They're racist. They're racist. I wish they were dead. Um, and they're just despicable human beings who never actually get better. At no point in the series... Do they actually have a good conversation or a kind conversation with Carter? Let that sink in. Three books. Three books set over nine months. At no point do they have a conversation. None whatsoever. Or at least no, no conversation that's good. Racist. Faust's the number two most hated. Number one. Annabeth's dad. Frederick Chase. Now, I know technically, well, no, I just know in general, he's not as bad as, you know, racists and transphobes. Um, but he is also abusive. Maybe not physically, but you don't need to be physical for it to be abusive. He is emotionally abusive. He is emotionally neglectful. And he never, ever makes up for it. And I will forever, ever be mad that it's Annabeth a child who has to continue going out of her way to reach out to this abusive family to try and rebuild this family. It's never her dad except for once. And that once <laughs> led to Annabeth going back to Camp Half-Blood because it didn't work out. And then again, she continues to having to reach out. And again, she's made out to have been wrong. <laughs> And made out to bas they basically say that she misread the way in which they treated her. But no, she was in an abusive household, a neglectful, emotionally manipulative, emotionally neglectful household. And this girl, at the age of seven, was being tortured by spiders. Something her dad would know would happen because he knows she's a demigod. And I assume he told his wife because, you know, you'd wonder why weird things happen and monsters appear, considering monsters did appear during the time that Annabeth was with them. So she would know she's not lying and would know that she heals quickly. And yet she's tortured and all this sort of stuff by spiders, cries out for her dad, stepmother comes in, tells her to shut up and stop bothering them. At no point does daddy, why did I call him daddy? At no point, you know, at no point does, I'm just going to call him that, daddy Chase come in to check on his daughter. The daughter he knows is a demigod. The daughter he knows is the daughter of a goddess who has a relationship with a spider to see if she's okay. He's a historian. He 
he'd fucking know. He'd know about Arachne. He'd know everything. And yet, he lets his daughter continue to be tortured. Let his daughter, at seven years old, run away and never, as far as we've heard, goes looking for her. It takes ten-year-old Annabeth going back to those assholes for her to reach out to her family again. And then leaves again because they get upset that monsters are there. She goes back a second time when her dad eventually reaches out. Things go wrong, she goes back, and it's just a whole thing. He apologises once. I'm like, no, no, no. Keep doing it, because you fucking suck. (laughs) I will never forgive this man. Never forgive him. And honestly, those top three, die in a hole. Die in a hole. That's what they deserve. Fall into obscurity and die in a hole. (laughs) I don't care. They suck. And these are my top five hated characters. I know technically the only two people I probably care about is Octavian and Leo. Um, But they're on the list because they do both suck and I do hate them. But those top three, again, die in a hole. But um, I want to know, who are your most hated characters in Percy Jackson? I would love to know because... um, I mean, well, comments boost the algorithm. The algorithm is the only way for me to make money. <laughs> so, uh, or Patreon, if you want to support me on Patreon, there is a link down below. Uh, subscribe also, like, share, um, tell me that I'm wrong. Anything to give me money. Appreciate you. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. And um, yeah, maybe I'll do a different one to this of uh, my top five favorite characters. Actually, you know, I'll do that as well. So, um, Enjoy, thank you, and goodbye.